Wow. We need to start scoring some tries, boys. Is there going to be the difference between us lifting a trophy or not, eh? Ah, uh, they told me they didn't want any part of me. What are you guys doing? Nice, boys. It's an easy one to get out for. Like, I had this one circled in the calendar at the beginning of the year. 80 burger. Yeah, who's the bottom of the totem? Who's, who's, I think we all go there. Answer that. <laughs> huh? We say it. We're saying who runs the house and who's the bottom of the. You just like you know the guy you don't want to upset. Like you don't want to upset that. Yeah. He's just too nice. Awesome. What about Keezy? You don't mind upsetting Keezer? The Dorchester room's a, a good setup. I think um, I was pretty excited when I, I heard Q was coming down. Or he kind of signed in New England first, and and that's what kind of made me want to come here as well. I think uh, Andrew and I have played. We played under twenties together. It's like eight years ago now, so I've I've known him for a while, um, and I was pretty keen this year on on moving to a team where I knew some guys and, and didn't have to do a complete fresh start. And you know we've kind of gone the extreme of that, where there's like twelve Canadians on the team, twelve guys that I've played with before, um, with the national team and stuff. So. Uh, living with Q and Ben um, has been awesome. Like they're they're great roommates to have. We we know each other very well. Welcome to uh, the Dorchester room, two one four nine. Best layout we've ever been invented. That's the cold that tub right there. Um, don't show the landlord. It's a fire exit, but got that uh, for what buck thirty nine at Costco. Retails for seven nine nine. Yeah, must have been a typo. Deal must, of the century. Must have been a typo. Nothing too crazy going on in here. Um, you know, got the gaming set up there. Uh, I play a bit of play a bit play of guitar. A bit of guitar for him. Play a bit of guitar, so that uh, that's kind of how I spend all my time. Yeah, Keezer would be your typical Canadian, like the nicest guy. Doesn't want to like step on your toes. Just like kind of real salt of the earth guy. Like looks out for other people and whatnot. Amazing roommate. Like just. Kind of like we'll go with the flow. Hey, you want to go? Yeah, I'm down to come out and whatnot. So, and Ben um, as a roommate, so he we're in the basement together. I've lived I live with him for a bit in Toronto. Um, he's like a hard worker, so he'll have a, a second job. But he's awesome. He's we call him like boardroom Benny or, or frat boy Benny. If he wants to have fun, he's one of the first guys to put his hands up and hey, let's have let's have a couple beers, you know, after the game or whatnot. But also like he's very. Um, He's a very business guy. Like he, he works hard um, outside of rugby too. You know, meetings, early meetings with his with his company and whatnot. And um, but yeah, so he's a good balance be between um, between keys. No, it's honestly been awesome. We've been gelling. Heat's a little too high, but we don't know what the issue is because we always got the heat off, and it's about fifty one degrees in the house. It's ten degrees Celsius. Like it's it is cold. <laughs> We're making our way down to, to what the boys have lived here before called the dungeon, but. Uh, First thing to bring attention to maybe is the, uh, the thermostat. Yeah. The January daspil was quite high, larger than expected. So 58 is actually balmy in here. So uh, the lowest it's gotten is 47, which is seven degrees Celsius or so. So a little chilly. Just cleaned my room for you guys. Probably the first time in a couple months here. The cleanest it's ever looked. You know, threw in a couple, uh, couple pieces. You got put the my, bike in there. Got my bike in there. <laughs> Get the green flag. Yeah, I got yeah. all the green flags in here. I got, unfortunately, I got a king, uh, king oh. mattress on a queen uh, box spring. Uh, I work on the side of rugby, so I got sort of the dual monitor set up. Board, uh, Border and Benny. Border and Benny. That's the the nickname around here. They know early morning. Keep it quiet in the house. No guitar, just in case someone calls or anything. Chocolate covered pretzels next to me. Just uh, some some snacking while I'm. Uh, Doing some work. Pretty big reader. Got a little uh, Instagram for my books as well. Ben's bookshelf. So that's usually me if I'm uh, got some free time getting getting the book and trying to f find something to read on the plane or, or on the way home from the away games. For me, it's it's a little bit different than Q and, and Cole there. Um, when I was trying to come over to play in the MOR, uh, they told me they didn't want any part of me. They didn't want they didn't want me on their team and, and uh, kind of forced me to look elsewhere, which turned out to be a bit of a blessing. Um, and then just playing, playing guys that I'm, I've played with before and playing friends is always fun. But uh, I won't be able to stand here in them chirp if they get a, a roll on us, so I'm, I'm looking forward to putting the beating on them.
coming into you know one of the games I've had circled on the calendar the whole year. You know, playing a lot of my friends on Toronto, um, a team that I never really got a chance to play for. I don't really think we need a lot more motivation than that. Is this really personal for some of our our mates? So we've spoken about it a little bit uh, this week around. We've got a pretty good big. Canadian contingent in our team and obviously Toronto Arrows being the only MLR team from Canada. A lot of them have played for them or if they haven't played for them they've, they've obviously lived in Canada so they always want to get one back over you know a lot of their mates play in the team and as Free Jacks as, as someone who has not, had, had nothing to do with the Toronto Arrows team we just want to show our teammates the respect and put our best foot forward in order to, for them to achieve what they're wanting to achieve and ultimately we want to win a game of rugby as well. Morning James. Morning. 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 Thanks Skew. We need to start scoring some tries boys. Is there going to be the difference between us lifting a trophy or not? Eh? I'm telling you now that is the, that is the difference. Scoring more tries. So again another, 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 another big step up this week for us. I want us to put a, a real big emphasis on getting our fucking mindset right when we get into that 5 meter zone and putting some, putting some boys over the line. We go into this week, every single time we get the kill zone, I don't care if it's killed or run, we have a different mentality. Okay, we just start turning over. We can get one or two more of those uh, attacks and tries. We're talking about over 50% kill zone and we are 50 pointing people. And that's what we're going to say when, when you feel that simmering starting to just overflow a little bit, eh? Okay, I think we took a massive step in doing it on attack this weekend, so let's just keep jumping towards that, eh? And your fanny pack in there. Yeah. Well, I think we've always fancied ourselves as one of the we've, uh, one of the best travelling teams in the competition, and we really pride ourselves on. I know as a management group, getting that right, you know, putting out the best uh, travel itinerary we can, and making sure the players are well fed and rested, and all of those sorts of things. Um, but it is definitely a, a huge disadvantage when you're, you know, on a long haul flight and you've got six foot six men cramped up on everyday planes and so this year we've called our away trips hit and runs um, in line with our baseball theme so that's sort of our mentality is to get in get the job done and then get the hell out of there. New England heads north to face Toronto the Free Jacks they've lost just twice this season and they are coming off a victory at Ford Quincy over Chicago. Howdy! Travel's quite unique. I, I, I don't think anyone has an expectation that we should have our team planes um, so I think it's kind of just rolling with the punches and understanding that you know, things can happen. Delta helps us out with uh, checking the bag, so it's usually we don't have to worry about uh, worry about carrying all of them on. But talking about like traveling across the continent, it really it's it's amazing how big our continent is. It's tough, and it's definitely like going through the time zones. Yeah, it's hard, especially if I'm quite an anxious flyer, so I'm not. I don't really sleep well on the plane. You're quite just um, a regular person of the community, I guess, in terms of of that. find that you know when you get off the plane everyone kind of gets on the bus and sits down and, and kind of goes into their own world so what we do is you get your airplane ticket your boarding pass with your name on it and you put a dollar in the kitty um, and usually we get about 30 tickets and 30 dollars you know we get someone if it's someone's local game or, or whatever they pick the first name and then you go up to the next person they pick the next name and you just kind of go all the way down the list until there's two left um, and then the, the winner gets the the pot and it's you know it's 30 bucks it's nothing crazy but it's always nice to get a bit of extra cash when you go into a new town and you know the cost is one dollar to, to be in. It's always fun just to have a bit of a, a game or an activity when we land and, and kind of get the boys together and everyone seems to be enjoying it pretty well. And there's your, and there's your pay raise for the weekend George. Thanks mate. <laughs> I quite enjoy our captain's run when we've had a day of flying. Just get there, like you say, get off the plane, head to the training ground, do our captain's run. Same sort of messages when we always travel and then have to do our captain's run on the same day. We'll keep it uh, about 60, 60%, 100% um, skills, obviously, and clarity. Um, jog through our stuff or, or run through our stuff and then we walk back to whatever our drivers want to do. Most of the times it's not 100% because we've been on a long trip um, had to do a lot of stretching and obviously sitting down for a long time you don't want to blow any muscles but captain's run funnily enough is run sort of by the captain and a couple of the key game drivers 
basically when you're on the field on a on a game day, you've you've only got essentially the players on that field. You know, you, you message it, a little bit of messaging from the sideline, but it's all run from uh, the players. So that's a little pre-rehearsal on the day before a game. We talked about what it means to a lot of the guys in this group uh, tomorrow coming back to well their home country, probably a team that they've played a lot of games for. So we owe them the respect and and fizz to turn up. And then on top of that, our, our whole mission this year is just to improve each week. So if we come out here, play better than we did last week, not only will we put a good performance out there, but we're taking a step in the right direction. So appreciate it. In Toronto, we're situated a bit out of the city, so it's sort of pretty hard to get in and walk around the city or do anything like that. So if we can't get out, go for a decent walk and have a look at some of the sites. A lot of the boys will just chill in their rooms or Usually we've got a team room that we all come together and play a little bit of Mafia or, or boys chuck something up on the projector and we'll all watch it together, you know. If any of the boys want to get out of their room and chill with a burger bunch of lads, then um, come down to the team room and, and do that sort of thing. Bit of Mafia goes on, you know, a few card games. Just being around the city, it's like, oh, like I'm staying at a hotel, you know, when I used to, when I used to live here. Um, I'm trying to like look at it as like, hey, I'm on, I, I'm on a new team. These new guys, are these are my brothers now. Like playing against some some of my old friends and whatnot. I think that, that that's what's helped me is that happened a lot in university where I'd be playing against buddies I knew and stuff like that. Um, but it's it's going to be unique. Um, fortunate enough that Toronto, very nice of them, they gave a bunch of us um, tickets for the game. So we have a lot of, we'll, we'll have a lot of family here and whatnot. Hopefully a big crowd behind the Free Jacks bench. I've been able to like mentally um, be good about it and be like, hey, this is, I got my boys with me and and uh, the Free Jacks are headed up to Toronto. We got a big away game, and um, and hopefully do well here. How many ice like Star Wars here, by the way? The dark side is just a twisted version of the Force. So all it is, and this uh, this I was like, wow, okay, that's pretty cool, is that to be in the dark side is just to use the Force for your own benefit. So if you're in the dark side, it's just going. I'm gonna do it this because I want that, and I want to be that, and I want to get that. Whereas the force is, how can I do something for others? How can I benefit others? How can I serve others? And therefore it's greater for the community, it's greater for everyone. And the one thing I'm thinking about today and guys coming back, uh, playing Toronto, et cetera, et cetera, was a big thing for me was like the word emotion. Like this, it's such a key thing in rugby. So the whole time you're thinking about how do we balance this emotion? How do we have emotion that gives us the intensity and the anger, you know, the stuff that we need, but we still have the clarity to bring what we need to bring to the party. I look at uh, that now and I think how do we then how, how do we play the emotion and accuracy? That's a big question we're talking about. And the answer I reckon is depends on how connected you are to the team. Everything you do on the field. If you connected with the team, you connected to your mate who's got aspirations and goals, you're not going to go do something stupid. Why? Or do something that's... Because you're going to hurt his, his dreams and his goals. You're not going to do something uh, also outrageous. Why? Because you're connected to a cause. You've got, you want to win a game or you want to win a, a trophy. It's all the same thing, man. It's how connected are you to your teammate? How connected are you to the cause? That drives that controlled emotion, man. And I think now we, we, go, we talked about that song that you're probably hear now. On the road again, uh, banded gypsies insisting things go our way. You, you take the selfish version of that. I, went to, I flipped around and I was like, well, what's the selfish version of that? Back home again, by myself, insisting things go my way. If there's one thing we focus on today, it's about that. How best do I serve my mate next to me? Forget about all the oh, your own agendas, forget about any of that shit. It's not about that because what are we? We're not, we're not isolated. We're not, back by ourselves, that's not the type of team we are. We're a band of gypsies, all together, all over the place. We're great mates, work for each other, grind for each other, that's what we do. Okay, selfless versus selfish. That's it, bury these guys. Spoken about enough, let's action it. 
It's the arrows in the blue jerseys up against the red, white, and blue of the New England Free Jacks. Big shove from the Free Jacks. In fact, it's popped up on the right side. Yes, the arrows have been penalized. Yes, boys. Yes, Red. Yes, boys. Hey, that's where we set the tone. Next job now. Yes, Coley. There he is. Talked about off the top, but a few guys that will be happy with that first call in the Free Jacks front row. Yeah, Cole and Keith and Andrew Quatrin, two very important players in that Free Jacks front row. Yeah, now we go, now we go. Yeah, bump in Cole, dirty, dirty, dirty. Watch the peel. Yeah, step up, Cole. Watch the peel. Watch the peel. <laughs> now there's the drive, it's formed up. They are. They're only five meters to go Do now. The three jacks on the move. This is a textbook drive from the line out. The arrows looking to do anything. They're over the line. Yes. First try. Yes, the boys. The three jacks. Yes, Joey. Yes, fellas. Woohoo! Had a boy, kill. Way to redeem yourself. Yeah. And it looks like Andrew Quatrin going over for five there. He'll be ecstatic with that. I know he's got about 30 okay. plus family members and friends in attendance public. here. Yes. We've had that up our sleeves for a couple of weeks now and, and hadn't used it in the past couple of games. So I, I've been keen, I've never been in a line out before. So that's my first time lining up in a line out. And um, I guess just the, the opportunity came up and I mean, it's self-explanatory. You just get in there and get 12 of you pushing and try and get the numbers advantage. And, and it worked our, in our favor. And that sort of got the ball rolling for the rest of the game and, and sort of got the momentum uh, for us to feed off of. Put on the gas, hey, put on the gas. Yes. And one, and one, another. Get in, get in, yes. Yes, Mitchie. Hands, boys. Incredible. And what a start for New England there. You can see them playing pretty dynamic off the line out, but immediately after just playing with the forwards, trying to get front football. Really executed so well early on and I'm not just talking about just from our kicking game and winning ball back and not being disciplined and not giving penalties away and first time I sat in a box where I can just sit back there and actually relax and not get bloody grey hairs every week so that was pretty cool. Yes! Nice man! There it is fellas! And another one! You can add another one. There it is boys. Great fucking start eh? Be proud of that first 20. Next job now. I think we're guilty the past few weeks of doing something really, really positive and then sort of taking a blow back or not feeding off that. And so we've talked a lot about sort of piggyback, right? Like building one momentum play into another one and feeding off of it. That first half just it was a flurry of tries and I think we just kept, kept the foot on the gas, so to speak, and um, kept raining sort of pressure in, in their half and keeping them in the right part of the field and, and sort of got rewarded for that. But at the back, now the little chip again, he saw space. Good covering from Brody, but he spills it. The New England knowing they can keep this ball alive. Two on one on the short side. It's inside where it goes. The bonus point is secured for the New England Free Jacks. Four tries in 24 minutes. And a few tough bounces for the Arrows. Ross Brody doing a great job covering on that uh, little chip from Spencer Jones. Unfortunately, just can't secure it. Gives the opportunity for the Free Jacks to counter right away. And lovely support lines. Free Jacks looking for their fifth. Back with his hands on his Andrew Quatrin. He's already got one under his belt. They're still moving. Now they're arriving. Quatrin's over the line. His second try here at York Lions Stadium. Here they go on the short side. Nelson's got three men to tackle. He takes one. Diving in the corner, looking to put it down, and he's got it down. We can see the New England Free Jacks just stacked right behind, almost adding extra numbers. Three and a half. Hey, the zero counts more now. Who cares about it? Play fucking defense now. Back in their half. And they're queuing up to run it in. And it is Olsen. He does his job. Beautiful offload from the youngster and he provides the eighth try of the half for the New England Free Jacks. Shit, I can't say I've been in this position too much in my life, eh? All right, it's been really good performance first in this half, eh? Okay, there's a couple of things. Like, for me, this next half is all about ourselves. What do we demand of a good performance second half? What does that look like? And good work, let's try and let's try replicate that in the second half. That's a champion, champion. Well, there's Olsen, he's set up too. He's flying through, he's got options both sides. 
He's turned around the corner. Maybe gives it a little early. We kind of spoke about it at half time and uh, uh, we played off the line out. We, Jason played inside to, to Isaac on the inside ball, which we changed up at, ha at half time. Saw a little space there. And he went through, and I think uh, I think Larue actually ended up scoring in that that try. So I think that was a, that was a really cool moment. In line. Hello, boy. Make an impact. Huh? We kept saying like a, a line we were using a lot when we came back at half was "Don't get bored," right? Like I think it's easy to switch off maybe when you're up by 30, 40, 50 points, and forget the little details and maybe miss a tackle or not get so motivated because you don't feel like every subsequent play matters so much. Um, so I think that was the big thing, stay focused and do the next job, don't get bored. Um, and, and yeah, to, to put together an 80 minute performance was like something I've yeah, really never been a part of. So it was pretty special. What are you guys doing? Oh, a massive hole midfield. And Putros has just stepped in it. Beautiful work. And he's looked after Joe Johnson, the mechanic, has finished his job sort of as the score ballooned a little bit and it started to tick over. For us, the more important score was the number against, right? Like the number four sort of meant less and less every subsequent score. Thank you. It's disappointing to let them get sort of that first five in, but then it was like, keep them at five. And so I think there was like a lot of really exciting plays where they were on attack. We played an excellent, incredible defense, just like sort of buzzing, putting them backwards, got the ball back and then sort of capitalized that. Yes. Yes. Got options. They got numbers. The arrows are stretched. A stumble. He keeps it. And he gets his second try. May have to answer to the boys there because there were three of them waiting for it. And that is Cameron Davidovitz. He's a hugely popular member of this team. You can watch his teammates come and celebrate. Yeah. That, that willingness to, to not concede in the last minute when there's nothing on the line, because there's everything on the line. We're in the dying moments here. They're two meters out. This is all about pride. This would be the last score. 80 minutes is up on the board. We're in the red numbers. Regrouping, Nichidi looks out left. O'Leary hits it flat, spinning. The ball's gone forward. Mitch Richardson can't hold on to it. And that will do it here. There's some tired bodies out there. There is a record score up on the board. The predominance of the Eastern leading New England Free Jacks. They win this one 80 points to five. Yeah, and the Free Jacks really showing why they're number one in the East with that performance. It's not often you put 80 points on a team, especially away. 80 burger. 80 points, Woo. 80 minutes. Got a lot of Canadian boys here and you know, obviously when you come back to a, a, a team that you played for, there's always that added impetus, you know, and I think it, it really helped us because it's a difficult place to come, but these guys are really used to it here and they made coming here just just feel a lot more, I suppose, easier, more, more comfortable and um, I just really great to give them that win today, you know, I think it was special for them and uh, I think the, the boys really enjoyed giving them that one. Danny, you're good luck. You need to come to more rugby games. Eh? There you go. This is my grandma's first rugby game in 50 years that she made it to. So just like pretty special to have so much friends and family come into the rugby game. Um, and so it was an easy one to get up for. Like I had this one circle in the calendar at the beginning of the year. Obviously, really pleasing performance. I know there's, well, everyone in the room is stoked and no, no more so than the Canadian boys that they've got to got, get one over their mates. Um, we talked about wanting to put into a, in a performance uh, for the Canadian boys especially, and I think taking another step forward uh, in the Free Jacks, you know, in our quest to obviously win the competition is a massive step. I'm proud of that effort. <coughs> That's some shit. Let's enjoy it, eh? Because on Monday, the, the next week comes and we'll start again. So fucking let's make sure we really enjoy this shit. Well done, mate. Yeah. yeah.